record on this computer. Okay, Bezos Hashem, today's daf is daf chof beis, and we will begin daf chof aleph omud chof aleph omud sheni. Um, let's do start from f- five lines from the bottom. Okay, five lines from the bottom chof aleph omud beis. Tanu rabbanim, the rabbis taught. Um, till now, well, again, we're talking. It's basically a lot of halachas we're going to be learning. Um, and which sprinkled with stories. That's the way the Gemara of Mayat Cotton goes. But uh, everything is halacha. So an Avelis, let's say Uncle Leo comes, didn't hear about the nifter, and then just shows up while everybody's sitting shiva. So Avel, Gimel, Avel, somebody who's supposed to be an Avel. Gimel, Yom, and Rishayim. During the first three days, Ba, he came to where everybody is sitting shiva, and he came, Mimokam Karav. He lives in Jersey, let's say, a place where you could come to New York in one day. So he showed up and he finds everybody started sitting Shiva. He didn't know about it. So he can join in to the group. What does that mean? He does not have to, um, he, he could start, he does not have to count Shiva from when he's sitting. He becomes part of that group. And when they finish Shiva, he could also finish Shiva. So let's say he came on day two. So then all he has to count is another five more days. That's it. But because technically he could have showed up uh, on the day that everybody started. If, you know, he could have came on the day of the Leviah. He lives very close. He just didn't know about it. So therefore it's Mayna Imohem. Says the Gemara, Ba mi makaim rachoik. But if he came from a faraway place, let's say he came from uh, from uh, Europe, so then he just showed up. Then if he show, even if he shows up on day two, right? Minorly atzmoy, he has to make a new counting. So he'll start with everybody, but he'll end the shiva a little bit later. Again, because he, he's starting shiva, he's just finding out about it. He cannot be counted as part of this group because he lives very far away. But here the Chiddush is like this, the Tanakama holds, that even if you live in Jersey, even if you live very close, if you come, if you show up on day number four, right, you miss the first four days of the Avelis, which is the most intense days of the Avelis, and then you show up, even if you came from a close place, you count on your own counting. So you'll finish with everybody else, but then you count the extra days that you missed because you cannot be considered as part of this group. Because you missed the, the, the main part of the crying, which is the first three days. Rab Shimon, I mean, Rab Shimon disagrees. He holds, even if you come, even if you come from a very close place on, a, on, on the last day, imagine somebody lived in New Jersey. He didn't know that he's supposed to shit Shiva. His brother died. He shows up to the family on the seventh day. He could count with everybody else, and basically he'll have one day of Shiva, and that's it. Amamar. So now that we discussed this price, let's ex- examine it. Gimel Yamar Rishonim, Bami Mokam Karev. If you come from a close place, Moini Imanim, you count it in the group. Amar Abchiya Bar Abba, Amar Ab Yoichinim, who? There's a condition here. Shiesh Gedol Habayis Babayis. It's the older person in the house is in the house. For example, uh, let's say, a guy lost his brother, okay? So he lives in Jersey, and he, now he comes to where everybody's sitting Shiva. So basically, he lost his younger brother. And when he comes, his father's sitting Shiva, Loyaleinu, and the rest of the family. So then he could be considered part of the group because he's he's the, you know, considered the smaller part of the family. So he can be considered and counted amongst the group of the of the family because the main part of the family, the Godel Habayas, the main part of the family, the father, he's the one who started shitting Shiva. So even if you show up late, you can join with him. That's the condition. So I'm going to ask you a question. So if everything is determined by the Godel Habayas, the, the, the one who's the oldest one in the house, he determines everything. Very good question. They're burying, they're burying somebody, right? They're burying uh, a, a, a person. And the Gedoyal Habayas, let's say it's the father, he, he sent the rest of the family home to sit Shiva, and he's going to the cemetery, right? And he stayed there for three days. You know, it took a, until they buried the, the, the body, he stayed there for three days. 
Maho, what's the den? What's the question? Do we consider it as if he's part? So everybody starts sitting Shiva because they're not involved in the burying. The, 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 they, they started sitting Shiva because they didn't go to the cemetery. So when the Godel Habayas comes back, is he part of that group? So let's say he, he stays there three days or more. Do we say that he can still join up to the group? Because at the end of the day, what was he doing, this Godel Habayas? He was doing the burying. So, so when he comes back, he'll keep another four days of Shiva because after the rest of the family started sitting Shiva, he'll join them. Or do you say, wait a second, he's the Gadol Habayas. He's the, the main part of the house. And since he didn't start sitting Shiva, so when he comes back, he starts a brand new counting. Tashuma coming here, he solved it. There's a, price, there's a statement, a teaching. Rabbi Yochanan said, the main family member went to the cemetery. He when he comes back to the house to sit Shiva, even though maybe he missed a day or two, he can count with them. And, you know, whatever they sat counts for him as well. Even though he's the Gadol Habayas and he didn't sit Shiva with them, all he has to do is finish up the Shiva with everybody else. So the Gemara asks a question, you mean he doesn't have to count by himself? Well, Tanya, but I found an opposite price that says, he has to make his own new counting because he's the Gadol Habayas. Answers the Gemara, Loikash, it's not difficult. It depends when the Gedoyal Habayas returned home from the cemetery. Ha, the first case is when he could count with the rest of the family, the Asr Begoy If He came back in the first three days. It took three days or less to bury the body. So then in the cemetery, and then he returned. So then, even though he didn't join at the very beginning of the Shiva, but we allow him to count with the rest of the group since, since, Although he's the G'day Labayas, since he was involved with the cemetery for the Kavit Ames, he can be part of the group. For ha, when do you say, like the Bryce says, Moina La'atzma, he counts by himself, the Loi Asa Begoy Tlasa, he did not come in the first three days. And the Gemara gives you like a similar uh, idea. Kiha, like the following story. The Amalei Rav Lebnei Hatzlep Poini. Rav said to the people who lived in Tzlep Poini, uh, the name of a place or a family. The also now what 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 was the also begoy tlasa limne I guess they were taking the bed. They would take the the family was um, uh, some part of the family went to the cemetery. So if he told them, Rav, if you come back within the first three days, limne badaychu, you could count with the rest of your family. The loy also begot lasse, but if you don't come back within the first three days, if you come back after three days, then limnu lenafshayu, you have to make your own separate counting. You're not part of the family that goes to Shiva. And this is Amaluhu Rava. Rava said, and this is a common scenario. It's not a new thing that people who lived outside Israel would bury their dead in Israel. We see in Abavel, there are people who lived in Mechuzah who bought a burial spot in Israel. So Amalei Rava, Rava who lived in Bavel, he said Lebnei Mechuzah to the people who live in Mechuzah, who that's where Rava was the rabbi. Atem, so he said to the family, Atem, those the loy azlinum azlisu basararsa, those that are not going with the bed, in other words, those that are not going on the El Al flight. So when do you start sitting shiva? You know, the dead is not going to be buried for another couple of days, especially during those times. It took a, a while till you got to, to Eretz Israel to bury. So he told the family, when you turn your house, when you, um, when you, when you turn your face from the end of the city, that's the last gate of the city, sending off the dead to be buried in Israel, that's when you should... Uh, you should start counting, even though the bed was not buried till many days later. And remember, normally Avelis doesn't start until you actually put the body into the ground. But since you're not seeing the, the body, you're not going into the base of Kabaris, when you turn around, that's when you should start sitting yeshiva. That's as if you buried uh, the, 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 the start the Avelis. And this comes up when Part of the family, I guess like this, in a simple shaila is if let's say one part of the family is going to Israel to bury and then coming right back, they could join the rest of the family 
and only sit Shiva for five days. If they went in like a, a two day, three uh, trip back and forth to Israel to do the burial, then they could join the rest of the family. If they stay longer in Israel and then they come back more than three days, then they probably have to do their own counting. The Gemara says like this, Again, Rab Shimon Oimer, the Brisa said, Even if somebody who lived in Jersey didn't know about the dead, that, the, that he's supposed to sit Shiva, and came on the seventh day of the Shiva, and he says, oh, you're all sitting Shiva, let me sit with you. you he can count with them, sit a, sit a couple of minutes, and then everybody gets up at the same time. So that's the leniency of Rab Shimon. It's very big leniency because the Tanakama hold, you have to come within the first three days. Amr Abchiyah Baganda, Amr Abyeyson, Shaul, Amr Rebbe, Rabbeinu Kaddish. It depends. If you come on the seventh day in the afternoon, nobody's there. So nobody's sitting Shiva anymore. So the condition is, they, he came on the seventh day, I'll grant you, but he finds people sitting Shiva there, you know, people who are still uh, comforting the mourners. But if nobody's in the house and everybody got up from Shiva because seventh day, as you know, you get up, you know, within an hour. So, so then, uh, then he can't be counted because nobody's sitting Shiva anymore. If that's when he shows up, he'll have to do his own counting. Boya Rabbana, Rabbana asked an interesting question. He guy shows up on the seventh day and, you know, they're wrapping things up. In other words, the, the people who are there comforting are just cleaning up near Aru Everybody's, you know, shaking themselves, getting ready to stand and go, go home. But they didn't go home yet. You know, maybe they're lifting the chairs and putting everything away. And therefore the Shiva is over, but not completely over. Maho, what would be the din if the, if the, the Karev, the relative shows up at that time, is that considered like the Shiva was over? since nobody is really being Menachem anymore, or since that people are still involved in cleaning up, perhaps the Shiva is still considered on, and he would, you know, sit for a minute or two, and then that will be enough. Teiku, the Gemara remains by a question. The Gemara says, Gemiri Chavre de Rab Abba Barchia. Uh, the friend of Rab Abba Barchia learned something, uh, the, the friend of, Rab, uh, of Rab Abba. Let's call Rab Abba Babachia Bar Abba. He learned something from, from Rab Abba. The friend of Rab Abba learned something from Rab Abba. Who is this friend of Rab Abba that learned something from him? Umani Rab Zera. It's Rab Zera. So let's get the story straight. Rab Zera was taught a psak halacha from Rab Abba. And it's very important to know that it's a friend because he's going to make a big error in what he heard. But anyway, this Rab Zera heard from his friend, Rab Abba, the following Psak. But Amri Lay and others have a different version of the story. Chavrei de Rab Zera and Rab Zera. A friend of Rab Zera heard from Rab Zera. So Rab Zera is issuing this, the Psak. And who's asking him what the halacha is? Umani. Rab Abba braid Rab Chibar Abba. Rab Abba, the son of Rab Chibar Abba, is asking for Rab Zera. So those are the two versions. Either Rab Abba is asking for Rab Zera or Rab Zera is asking for Rab Abba. So let's go with the first version. Rab Zera is asking for Rab Abba. And he said, Omar Rabbi Yechelen. He's whoever it is said in the name of Rabbi Yechelen. Halacha, the halacha is two things. Rab Shimon ben Gamliel betrefus. We paskin like Rab Shimon ben Gamliel by a certain halacha in trefus. In, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The halacha Rab Shimon be Evo. The halacha is like Rab Shimon by Evo. So what is that? What is that? Shimon Rabbi Abel, Rab Shimon Rabbi Abel, Hada Amram. We is the same Rab Shimon that we just spoke about. That if a relative shows up on day seven, he can join up with the rest of the group. He doesn't have to show up the first three days or four days. He can even show up on day seven when they're wrapping things up. We paskin like Rab Shimon. We also paskin. The first statement was we paskin like Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel betrayfus. Whatever Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel said in Chulin regarding a certain trefa, we know that if the animal has a a, a deadly uh, wound, so then, the, and that it could die, the animal is treif, and it's not kosher. You can't even shecht it and eat it. So the Tanah, we learned in the Mishnah, b'nei ma'ayim, the intestines of an animal, shenikfu, that got a hole, the lecha, and the, the internal juices, soisimon, uh, made a plug, so the hole is not really a hole. So somehow the body healed itself, by plugging itself up with its internal juices. So is that a, a plug that is, is a good plug that will last or not? 
It's a natural plug. So the brapshera, that's kosher. It's considered a kosher animal. So when you shecht it, if you saw that, then you could, it's a kosher animal. Divereb shimib ben galil. My lecha, what kind of, what is these juices? I mean, the intestines don't have juice. Amrav kahana, shirka demaya de nofak agav duchka. The juice of the intestines that it can't, you can't, if you squeeze it very hard, juice will come out of it. So that's considered a good plug. The Chachamim hold, it's not considered a good plug. And it, just because you see it's, the hole is plug, it's considered as if the hole's still there and the, the animal is a trefer. So we paskin like Rab Shimem Galil when it's trefer. Says the Gemara, so Rab Abba gave this psak halacha. Again, halacha is like Rab Shimem Galil on trefer and halacha ke Rab Shimem be'evel. Omar Mandahu, there was a, a person and the author who wrote the Talmud forgot who was this person? But there was another student who said, when he heard that that B'Shem, Rab Abba, that the halacha is like Rab Shimon ben Gamliel by Trefus and Rab Shimon by Avelis, he said, Iski, I wish I have the merit and have the money. Ba'asik, I would go up to Israel. I could learn this teaching from the mouth of the teacher. I wish I could go visit Rab Abba in Israel and ask him, really, is the halacha so? And God helped him, and he got the money. He saw like he, this person went up. He found Rababa. So he found Rababa, and he asked him, Amalei, Amamar, did you say, Halacha Karab Shimon Megamliya by Trefus? The Halacha is like a Shimon Megamliya by Trefus. Because I heard from Rabzeir, who's your friend, he said, You said the Halacha is like a Shimon Megamliya. Amalei, so Rababa told him, Ah, no, I said, Ain Halacha Amare. I said the Halacha is not so. So you see, you have to verify things. And this Talmud verified from Rab Abba that he actually said, no, we don't paskin like Rab Shimon ben Gamliel Batrefus. Okay, so the, this student from Israel, from Bavel, asked him another question. Rab Shimon ben Bamai, what, what's your opinion regarding Rab Shimon when it comes to Abelis? Do you paskin like him or not? Amale, I'm not sure. Look, the Ninu, it's, uh, it's a machlaikis if you paskin like Rab Shimon. The Itma, we learned, Rav Chizda Omar, Rav Chizda says, Halacha. The Halacha is like Rav Shimon by Abelus. Again, what did Rav Shimon say by Abelus? A relative that shows up on day seven, he can join the group and then finishes Abelus in an hour. The Chein Omar Rabbi Yochanan Halacha. But Rav Nachman says, Ain Halacha. The Rav Nachman says it's not Halacha. So it's not so clear if you pass like Rav Shimon or not. Or not when it comes to Avelis. But regarding Trefis, you certainly don't pass it like Rav Shimon ben Gamliel. So the Gemara concludes, We don't pass it like Rav ben Trefis. We don't pass it like Rav Shimon ben Trefis. But we do pass it like Rav Shimon ben Avelis. Why? Because Rav Shimon, when it, the opinion by Avel, he's very lenient. And we always go after the lenient opinion by Avelis. We go according to the lenient opinion when it comes to Avelis. Fascinating Gemara because the friend heard from Rab Abba and said, oh, that you paskin like Rab Shimon ben Gamliel and, uh, by Trefus. And when he, the, the Talmud went up to Israel and he heard from, the, from, the, from Rab Abba himself that he never said such a thing. Funny. Now for the rest of the Gemara is just halachos about the differences when you're burying your father or mother, Loyalenu, or you're sitting burying um, somebody else, a relative. It's just about 11 halachas. So it's very, uh, just halacha oriented. I'll call, now, the first thing you have to know is that there's an Issa Doraisa, to, especially in Israel, they keep this halacha very strict, that if someone dies, they bury him that day. And there's an Issa not to allow like Solon in Losai or, uh, that, that day, you should bury him. There's a postage that talks about that you bury people right the day, they, the, the moment that they die, that day. So there, there is an, because there's a mitzvah essay, a mitzvah's license say there's probably a mitzvah to not, you know, have a long levias. I'll call a mason kulam, every other type of, let's say you're burying your brother, a person's burying his brother. So, so then, and nobody else is involved. Let's say the brother didn't have children. So the, 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 more, the faster you can get the, the Leviah over, that's great, because it's more of a mitzvah to a uh, covenant amaze to bury him as soon as possible. And, and I'll over val imoy, but on your father and mother, that is not nice to have a quick Leviah, because it's your father and mother, 
even if you're going to have a Leviah that takes a long time, and even if, because you have a long Leviah, you're not going to be able to bury him that day, you'll have to bury it the next day, that's father and mother, you have to show a covet, and therefore you have to have a long Hespedim and make it a little longer Leviah. But Hoya Er Shabbos, if it was Er Shabbos, and if you don't quicken the Leviah, even by your father and mother, you'll have to push it off to Matzah Shabbos to bury them. Or the, we have another gear, so if it's raining outside, so and they didn't have indoor Leviahs, so then Harez and Meshubach, it's even praiseworthy for your parents to bury them right away. Sheina Oisa, because you're not quickening the Leviah, El El Chvayit of Avima, because of to honor your parents. Next halach. I'll call a Mason Kulan if you're burying somebody else. The halachi is, let's say you're a, 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 a person's a, a sh- sitting shiva. We know, we learned before that if it's, he could do work if he doesn't have, if it's a Dover Ovid. If it's, if it's, uh, if he's losing big money, he can do a little work even if he's an Oval. But call a Mason Kulan, Rotsam Amayit Beiska, if you want to minimize your business, if you don't want to play the stock market. You have the choice. We go to Ahmed Bey's, right? You, if you want, if it's a Dover Aved, if you're going to lose money, you can get involved with the markets and just if it's a little bit. But but if it's your father and mother, you should not get involved at all because you have to show more respect for your father and mother, the mother when you're sitting Shiva. Here's the interesting thing. The, the, there was a custom I don't know why, but they would, they would tear, when they would tear, they would actually, you were able to see the person's shoulder. They, they tear, they made a Kriya so much that while you're burying the person, and I don't know if this is a Kriya, they actually would uncover your shoulder. There was an Indian to look like a homeless person. But as you bury the, 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 the dead, you should look like, a, if this is somebody you're sitting Avelis for, you have to look like a homeless person where you can actually see the person's shoulder. We don't do that today because, you know, it looks funny. It's one of those things, but th- there was a mitzvah to do that. So, but if anybody who you're sitting Shiva for, Ratsa Chaylitz, Ratsa Enechaylitz, if you want to do that motion of uncovering your shoulder, you could do it. If you don't like to do it, you don't have to do it. But if you see father and mother, you must uncover that shoulder. You must show how pained you are in public. But the Gemara says not all the time you have to do that. There was one great Godel, Shemes Aviv. His father died. And he wanted to uncover his shoulder. But he knew if he's going to do that, his friend, who's also a Godel Adar, is also going to uncover his shoulder. And that will look, you know, then, then he didn't want his friend to be involved with that. Because he was doing it, his friend, who's also a Gadol Adar, also wanted to uncover his shoulder. So the, because of that, even though it was his father and mother, but this would cause shame to a, a, town, a, a Gadol Hadar because he's going to do it. He did not, he refused to do the uncovering of the shoulder. So Amar Abaya, Abaya says, explains the story. Gedoyal Hadar, the Gadol Hadar was Rebbe. In other words, Rebbe lost his father. And Rebbe was supposed to uncover his shoulder, but he didn't want to do it. Because if he would have done it, another Gadol Hadar, seeing that Rebbe is doing it, would have done the same. And Gedoyal Hadar Shimai, who was the Gedoyal Hadar that was with Rebbe, that would have done what Rebbe would have, would have done on behalf of his father? Was Rabbi Yaakov Bar Acha? Rabbi Rabbi Yaakov Bar Acha. The Ikad the Amri. Others say it was the story's reverse. Gedol Ladar is Rabbi Yaakov Bar Acha. Rabbi Yaakov Bar Acha probably lost his father. He lost his father Acha, so he wanted to do the chalitza, which means uncover his shoulder. But if he would have done it, his friend who was with him, another Gedol Ladar, was Rabbi Noah Kaddish. He would have done it. Gedol Hadar Sheimai, Rabbi, Rabbi would have uh, that was with him. Rabbi would have done it. So therefore, he didn't do it. So the Gemara just wants to prove that the second version of the story is more correct. Because Bishlama, Laman de Omar, it makes perfect sense. The story was Gedal Hadar Shi'imai Rebbe. The Gedal Hadar of, of, the gender, of, the, of, the, of the one that was with him was Rebbe, and it was Rabbi Yaakov who lost his father. Hainu Dimnim Nevelaycholetz, because that's why he, did, he refused to do uh, uncovering the shoulder, because Rebbe would have done it. El Laman Rabbi Yaakov Bar Acha. Rabbi Yaakov Bar Acha was the 
accomplice. It was really Rebbe who lost his father, and Rebbe refused to do it because Rabbi Yaakov would have to do chalitza. Um, what's wrong with Rabbi Yaakov doing chalitza? Who was Rebbe's father? The great Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. Amai nimna v'leicholetz. If, if it was Rebbe's father, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, nasi hava. If Rebbe's father died, that means Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel died. He was the president, the leader of the, of the Jewish people. So v'kule alma mechaiven l'michalatz. Every Jew is supposed to uncover their shoulder when the, the nasi dies. So that part, that if that was the story, the story doesn't make too much sense. Tasha. So it's difficult. So that really the story went like this. Rabbi Yaakov lost his father. And he didn't. Ref he refused to honor his father by uncovering his shoulder because that would shame a Talmud Chacham. Because Rebbe, who was his close friend, seeing Rabbi Yaakov doing that, he would have done it. So he didn't. He didn't do it. So not a, even for honoring your father and mother, you have to be honor also to a Talmud Chacham if uh, if if this would cause him to do something shameful. Now we're talking about taking a haircut. After you're sitting shiva, a kolam mason kulin, any type of availus, mstaper la achalam and yoim. You take a haircut after 30 days. Al ove vi imoi, val imoi, if you lose your father and mother, achi garo by chaberu. Until your friends tell you, hey, your hair is too long. So apparently, with your father and mother, you have to be machmir more than 30 days. And, and it would seem to be that even throughout the 12 months that you're, you're an ovel, even throughout the 12 months that you're an ovel, for your father and mother, you still have to uh, keep your hair long until people tell you, hey, it's time for a haircut. But until that happens, you're not supposed to take a haircut. That's why if you have a good friend, he tells you to take a haircut even after 30 days for your father and mother. But it would seem that even throughout the 12 months, you don't take a haircut every month. You would take a, you let your hair grow long if you lost your, if you're within the first year of your father and mother. I'll call a mason cool on every uh, on every type of availus. So nichnas the base has simchal achalamid yoim. You can go to a holiday party, like say an office party, after 30 days. After 30 days, you can join the, the office party. Al ove valimai al ache be yid beis chaydish. On your father and mother, you can't go for a party till after 12 months. Omar rabba baba chana. Rabbi Baba Choma said, it means lesimchas mereyas. It means only by a holiday party you're allowed to go. What about a marriage, a chasana? A chasana, even if you're an oval for somebody else, let's say, even after 30 days, you're not allowed to go to a chasana. So if you, if it, what he's trying to say is if you lose a sister, so according to the way the first the Gemara understands now that only for an office party you're allowed to go, but not for a nisuin, a real simcha, you're not allowed to go. So the Gemara asks, Mesave, I'll ask you a question. The Brisa says, Ula simcha, you're allowed to go for a simcha. Vilimareis, two different things. Simcha probably is a marriage. Lamareis is like an office party. Yoim, after 30 days, you can attend that. So we see that even if you're an oval, for a sister, after 30 days, you're permitted to not only attend an office party, but you're allowed to attend, attend a, 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 a nisuin. So the Gemara leaves it by kash, it's, that's taka difficult. But it seems to be from the Gemara, and the way we're reading it straight, I'm not sure if every Rishon reads it, is that even if you lost a, another relative, after 30 days, you shouldn't be going to a, a, a wedding. Gemara says uh, the opposite. Ameima mas nehachi. Ameima had it this way. The version. Amar Rabba Baba Chana ule simchas mereis muta likonis lealter. You're for a holiday party. You don't have to wait for thirty days. Uh, you're allowed to go right away. So for uh, uh, we're not talking about uh, a nesuin. Uh, just for a holiday party after the shiv is over, you're allowed to show up. So the Gemara says, Latanya, we learned in the Brisa the simcha. For a, a marriage, you wait 30 days. For a, for, a, for a holiday party, you also have to wait 30 days. So how could you say for a holiday party, a, a friend's party, you don't have to, you could go after the Shiva. So the Gemara says, it's not difficult. If it's, if, if it's the first one, if you're the first one making the party, you're not supposed to make a party uh, for, for your friends. If it's the first time, but ha ba anusa 
when are you allowed to make a party after Shiva is if you attended everybody else's party. In other words, you have a group of friends where everybody makes a party and pays for it. And then the next time it's round robin, the next time somebody else pays for it. And the next time somebody else pays for it. So if your turn happens during the Shloishim, since you're the one paying for the party and it's an obligation on you, so you're not so besimcha, that kind of party you can make uh, even during the Shloishim. Now we go to the Kriya. Akola mason kulan, kireya tafach. When you rip, you have to rip a tafach. But for your father and mother, it's not enough to rip a few inches. You have to rip so much your shirt that they can actually see your heart, your body. They can actually see where your heart, you know, the, the center of your navel. How do I know, micro? what's the posik that you have to rip, rip a tafach? Because the posik says, by Chazik David, David held in his hands, with God of his clothing, by Karaim, and he, and he ripped it. Holding an object is basically with your fist. You hold something, a tefach, in your fist. So David Amelech ripped Kriya, a tefach, so that's how you know Kriya is with a tefach. But for your father and mother, the Gemara adds that you have to rip until it uncovers your heart. Now the Gemara says, I'll call a mason kulam on all mason, I feel a lovish asara halukin. Let's say you're wearing 10 shirts, so then, ain't a karea LL. You only read the top shirt. Al alvival imay. But if your father, and mother, if you're reading, wearing, happen to be wearing two or three shirts, kairin eskulam, you rip all of them because you have to show your heart. You have to get down to your skin. Vaapor korsusay. That's an odd word. Vaapi korsusay, which means the your turban. Ain't a kevis. You don't have to rip your turban because that's your head covering. But the Bryce said, a man or a woman both have to rip their heart. Now think about this. A woman ripping from her shoulder down to her heart, she's exposing herself a little bit. And that's not sneeze. But the Chachamim hold that a woman should do that because everybody sees that she's sitting shiva, whatever. There's no hear her. Nobody has uh, illicit thoughts. But Rab Shimon ben Eloza, I mean, Rab Shimon ben Eloza says, no. Ha'isha kaira says a tachtoy. She rips the her, let's say, the shirt closest to her skin, uh, and then and then puts it back. So the chayzeres as the alien. Then she cuts the the top one, so that when she cuts the top one, you can't really see her heart. So basically, she's more tsunua that way. But it seems the chachamim hold no, she that they rip everything even until you can see her heart. Now, the Gemara says over here, Akola Mason Kulam. Let's, you got to see the picture so we know what we're talking about. Um, on every mace, you, you, this is called a rip, right? A normal rip. Right over here, ripping in the middle of the shirt. But if you rip over here by the neck, it doesn't look like a rip because it looks like you're just opening up the, the collar, so to speak. So you have more room to move your head. So the, the Gemara says like this. I'll call a mason kulan and all other um, and all other uh, dead rots of mavdal kame suffer shaloi. You can you can rip by the neck hem rots of If you don't want it, you can rip normally by the middle of the shirt. Like I said, because you don't have to really sew the the rip. I'll overvel imay mavdal. You have to actually rip from the middle of the shirt. You have to show two parts of the shirt, like I see in the screen over here, not in the screen, over here, you have to show that the shirt has a rip, but by the neck, you can't really see it. And that's what Rab Shimon holds. Rab Yehuda holds, no, by everybody, you have to rip in the middle of the shirt. If it's not dividing beyond the, the head opening, that's not called, that's a nonsense Kriya, because you can't really, look, it doesn't seem like a rip unless you can see that there's a hole in the shirt. Amar Ababo, my time at Rabbi Huda. What's the reason, Rabbi Huda? The Xiv, the Pasuk says, Vayechazek Piv Godov, Vayikarim Lishnaim Karim. He ripped it into two pieces. Mimash Mishinema Vayikarim. It says, David Amelech ripped. Any a day, Shul Lishnaim. If you rip, obviously you're ripping something into two parts. Ela Shinirin Karim Lishnaim. It had to be a rip that you can tell it's ripped into two parts. There are two parts to the shirt. And that's only a rip that's beyond, a rip that's lower than the neck hem. 
because then you can see that there's actually rip in the shirt. But if it's in the neck hem, well, it looks like you're just expanding the neck hem, but it doesn't look like a rip. I'll call a mason kula. The Gemara continues in another halacha. And all the mason, if you want, if you want to keep the shirt, you just, um, you know, make a temporary fix after shiva. Let's say put safety pins and, and keep it connected after shiva. And after shloishim, you could sew it up and make a permanent fix. But for your father and mother, you could, you could only, after 30 days, you can have safety pins in the shirt if you want to keep the shirt. But you can never mend it completely uh, and sew it together and fix it, uh, a permanent fix. But the Mishnah, the Brisa says, and a woman, uh, right away, she's, since it's uh, sitting shiva and a woman's with ripped clothing, it's not so nice. So woman has permitted, she doesn't like ripped clothing. She's permitted to shoylaltoi, to put safety pins right away, but make avoida because it, she's more self-conscious about having a ripped shirt when everybody's coming to visit her. This thing of ripping is only by the levaya, by, you know, going to the cemetery but not when people are coming to visit, a woman is permitted to shalaltoi to like put safety pins and connect it a little bit. Kiyosa Ravin, when Ravin came from Israel, he said from his rabbi, Rabbi Amar Rabbi Yechenem, I'll call a mason and everybody dead, grotso kareya bayad, you can do rip with your hand, which means that it's a bad rip, so you won't be able to fix it. And it will be a sloppy fix because uh, it's not a, a straight rip. Grotso kareya bakli, but if you want to be you know, you want to keep the shirt, you can rip with a, you know, a knife to make a straight rip so that it will be easier to mend back when you want to fix the shirt. But I'll for your father and mother, but you have to rip with your hand. You have to make a messy rip so it'll be hard to fix the shirt. I'll call Hamesim Kulan and all the dead people, me bafnim, but you have to, you, 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 on every all the dead, you have to rip the from the inside. In other words, you can have a shirt that covers it, but you want to uncover your on your heart, so you rip the inner shirt. Al imai, since your father and mother, kareya me you you rip the outer shirt, which means that basically for your father and mother, you have to really do a rip that they can see the your your skin, which we basically said the same halacha, but it seems to uh, stress it again. For a president, you have to rip a very noticeable rip. I'll ask you a question. My love, I feel a nasi. That other the imai is compared to a nasi uh, only if you commend it. You're not allowed to mend it. But my, my love, I feel a nasi. Even a nasi is that means that uh, even a nasi is only to a father or mother if you commend the shirt. But with everything else, a, a president is, is like, uh, like a, another lost relative. It doesn't have the humerus of the father or mother. So the answer is loy not so. The Bryce means levar mi nasi. The nasi, the president of the Jewish people that lived in Israel, has the same dinim exactly as your father and mother. You have to rip on the outside. You probably have to rip to your heart. You have to rip... Uh, uh, you know, all your shirts, even if you're wearing, wearing many shirts, the president has much more cameras. Not only, and the, this will conclude, not only is it the president in Israel, but the president, the leader of, of the Gov Bavel, also you have to take care of. Nesia Shachim, the Nasi in Bavel died. Amalei Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda said to the people, Cafe Asinasai, you know, stand on a stool, turn over the stool, you know, on a high place, v'kum Allah, and, stand, and get up on it, v'achve kriya la'am, and show everybody that you're ripping. So Rav Chizda told this Rav Hanan or Rav Nachman Bar Ami, show everybody that you're ripping because this Nesia, the Nesia, I guess the, the Jewish mayor or the Jewish president in Bavel died, that you're showing that you're also noyeg avelis, very public avelis, like you would do for your, like you would do for your father and mother. So that ends the Gemara. But one thing you see that just a father and mother, that not only you have to do kibbutz of aim when they're alive, but there's all these halachas that when they die, you have to show tremendous kibbutz of aim. That's the, that's the, 
beauty of the Jewish people. That's why I just want to end with that. I have a shy layer. Going back to the haircut for a moment. Cannot take a haircut for 12 months, 30 days, definitely. After that, when somebody tells you, you know, you look like a little bit of a builder high, you have to take a haircut. It doesn't look good. Right. So you take a haircut, let's say, 45 days after. But then the hair continues to grow. You have to wait again within the 12 no. months or somebody oh. to tell So according to some opinions, you see, the Gemara is a little bit unclear. Look at this Gemara. Achi Garo by Chebeiro. Till they keep screaming at you. So it could be that they have to scream at you again. Or uh-huh. is this a one-time thing? What the Gemara right. means, the first haircut is actually Gara by Okay. Uh, so I think the halacha is that most of the Paiskim will say, till the, the first time you take a haircut has to be Yigaru by Chaverev. Then afterwards, you take a haircut on your own. But uh-huh. others hold, no, what the Gemara means, they constantly have to scream at you. So I think people uh, are much like that. Until when? Let's, let's say months. after after the first, you know, during the till 12 months, during the first 12 right. months, every two months, you take a haircut. If you normally would take a haircut every month. So maybe some would, would for their father and mother will take a haircut, you know, every two months. Yeah, and there are rules about manicuring also and, and uh, the taking baths and so on. But that's not mostly the nails. Is nails yeah, so. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, have a great Shabbos. Very a good. great Shabbos. Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos.